like I actually like I'm I f I'm feeling real feelings reading this book. Like like this is ink on paper, and I'm. <sighs> And I'm ready for another day of pain. It actually hurts my brain sometimes how stupid they are. No, no, no. My heart. <laughs> it's breaking. It's breaking. I need to get a hold of myself. <laughs> I just got home and there was a package at my doorstep. And I don't know what this is, but I just have a feeling that it might be something very exciting. I'm actually like nervous about this. She's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, you're actually, oh. What is my life? She's thick, guys. She is thick. This is my Roman Empire, for real. <laughs> guys, I'm so scared. I've actually had this book in my hands for a few days now, which I feel, like, guilty that I haven't started it yet, but I'm so terrified to start it. Like, I want to, don't get me wrong. I really want to start it, but my brain is just, like, stuck in this thought process of as soon as I start it, it's gonna be over. Like obviously not as soon as I start it, but I'm gonna start it and then I'm gonna read it and it's gonna be over and it's gonna be over. Like this is the last Magnolia Parks book. I know that there'll be more Daisy Hates books and I do love Daisy Hates so, so, so much. Like I genuinely think I like the Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates books equally. They're both just as good to me as each other, but I really don't want to say goodbye to this, these like characters and these POVs and things. And I just know it's going to be such a hard read, but like such a good read. But the idea of it being over and not being able to like look forward to another Magnolia Parks book specifically is just like so painful. As you guys know, this is my favorite series in the world. I read Magnolia Parks the first three books back in 2022. Loved them, favorite books of the year. I put off reading Daisy Hates a Great Undoing until the start of 2023, just because I like, I didn't want to start it and that one to be over and not have another one to go into because at the time that was like the newest release and I, I didn't want it to be over. I didn't want the experience to be over. I didn't want to have to like say goodbye to the characters without knowing that I could just pick up the next book whenever I wanted. But then I read Daisy Hates a Great Undoing at the start of February and that was my favorite book of 2023. And now, it's 2024, so this has been such a long time coming. I've been looking forward to this book for so, so long, and I just don't want it to be over. And so I've really just been putting it off. I feel like that may sound so stupid to some of you, and I really thought that, like, when I got this, like, as soon as I had it in my hands, I was just going to start, like, binging it. Then I got it in my hands, and I was like, I can't do it. I've read literally the first chapter, and I'm like, I can't do it. Like, <laughs> I'm so scared. I know that's being so dramatic, but when you just have such an attachment to a fictional world, it's really hard to say goodbye. Oh, it just like hurts my heart and like my soul to like think that it's just gonna be done. I have no idea what to expect. I'm sure it will be painful, but I think I've avoided it long enough. So I think I'm gonna start it. Usually when I read the books in this series, I annotate them as I'm reading them, but it literally takes me like so long to get through them because I annotate them. Like every single page I'm tabbing, I'm writing notes. I'm, I really go all in and it just takes me a really long time. And although I kind of want this to take me a long time, I think what I've decided is I'm just gonna go like I'm just gonna dive in, no annotations. I'm just gonna read, not annotate during my first read, but then go back and reread it and annotate it on my reread. Oh, I like, I'm scared, but I think I'm just gonna start it. I need to take the pressure off myself and just like read it. Just start it. Some of you are probably like, Rachel would have been watching this video for like 10 minutes and you still haven't even started the book. I know guys, I know, I'm so sorry. Hello, future Rachel coming in here because I realized I didn't tell you guys whether this was like spoiler free or spoiler or whatever. And so I'm just jumping in to say this is like pretty much spoiler free. I do mention or like read you guys some out of context quotes. So if you don't want to see like anything to do with this book or even just like vague hints at things, 
probably don't watch this video, but I don't spoil anything specific. I like hint at things and if you read the book, you'll probably know which things I'm talking about once you read it. And sometimes I mention characters or, or sometimes I imply things, but I don't like actually like straight out say things and I don't straight out spoil things. So I just like get scared because I'm like, what if someone takes something I've said as a spoiler? I don't think I've spoiled anything, but if you don't want like any sort of spoilers at all or like anything even just like in the realm of potentially I don't know creating some sort of expectation don't watch this video but I would say that this is a spoiler free reading vlog so enjoy I was just about to start the book and then I was like wait I need to change my outfit so I feel like I'm officially ready to start this book with my House of Jupiter t-shirt my MPU uniform if you will okay I'm gonna start it I'm gonna do it I missed them so much. These characters are my best friends. They are. They are. <laughs> I could cry. Like just being back in the world, I'm crying. <sighs> I can't see the page. My tears are blinding me. I just can't explain. Like, this writing and these characters, the way they talk, the way they act, the way they think, it's just, it feels like home to me. It really does. Home in book format. I'm so scared for this to be over. I kind of forgot about what happened at the end of the other book and I don't, I don't wanna think about it. I'm crying again. It's been twice in five pages. I need to get a hold of myself. This is embarrassing. I'm already in so much pain. This is a lot. It's a strange new frontier that I found myself on. It's where I live now, all alone in my mind, just wandering further and further into the dark. <sighs> Magnolia Parks is one of those books where if everything is going right, at least something will be going wrong. And if everything is going wrong, at least something will be going right and at all times you're so conflicted between being happy for the good thing that's happening or being devastated for the bad thing that's happening often it's kind of like one character will be doing well while another is going through the hardest time of their life and it's so hard to feel both at once like feel happy for the characters whose life is going well or feel sad for the characters who are just falling apart. And right now, there's something so good happening and something that we've been waiting so long for to happen. But at the same time, there's something so bad happening and it's so confusing and conflicting as a reader because you're like, we finally have this moment that we've been waiting for for four books and yet I still feel so empty and devastated and sad. I have to go out tonight. I can't cry off all my makeup. The little family she built for herself gathered around her, locked arms, and didn't let go. Didn't budge. You okay? That's really sad. Is it? Yeah. You haven't just the book. I know. I'm not doing well. <laughs> Thank you. Honestly, when I ended The Long Way Home, I thought it was a lie. Like I was like, maybe, maybe it can't be true. Maybe something else will happen and it won't be like what it seems. I really denied it, but it's true. Pain doesn't like that though. Doesn't like to be relocated, doesn't like to be ignored. It demands to be felt. I 
did not expect that. I'm reading this scene where Magnolia is really overthinking something and Jessa Hastings, well I always say that her writing is incredible, but her ability to write a, like a thought sequence, I guess, I don't know, I feel like there's better wording for that, a train of thought, I guess, it's just wild to me because if you're an overthinker, which I'm sure many of you are, you just know what it's like to be in your own head just like overthinking something where one thought leads you to another, leads you to another and you kind of spiral and she's doing that and I just feel like I never read it so realistically in a book. Like this feels like I'm genuinely in someone's head reading them spiraling and even like she goes off on some other tangent and then she like kind of realizes and gets back to her original thought and it's like that is literally what our brains do ah oh, these characters just feel so real so real like what is wrong with some of these characters like Oh my gosh, it actually hurts my brain sometimes how stupid they are. <sighs> oh my gosh. Magnolia has so many like one-liners that are just like so funny to me. Like they're not funny because if people were like that in real life, I would think they were so rude. But Magnolia is like so oblivious to the fact that she's saying something that's kind of rude. She just says it because she thinks it and she doesn't realize that <laughs> that it's very like, it's just, it's just so funny to me. For example, she's going on a birthday trip and she says, and we take my plane because it's better than everyone else's. And it's just like, that is Magnolia summed up. She just says it how it is, you know? <laughs> but it's like, why is that so funny to me? And we take my plane because it's better than everyone else's. Like, so Magnolia. <laughs> oh, Magnolia is like my spirit animal, honestly. I wish I had like the confidence and the, the <laughs> delusion <laughs> that she has. She's sitting down with her parents. And she says to them, you summoned me, did you not? Summoned? Harley rolls his eyes, that's her dad. You're not the bloody ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> oh, like it's an awful situation happening right now, like actually terrible. But she still manages to make me laugh, which just, I appreciate that, Magnolia. Her dad was like, oh, thank you for coming and meeting with us. Like, I'm glad that you came. And Magnolia says, I'm only here because I was promised to Kelly. It's just too good. It's too good. Like, okay. It's camp. I think that's that's the type of humor it is. It's campy. It's so ironic. It's so outrageous. It's so ridiculous that it's funny. I don't care about designer things. I don't care about, I don't know, this idea of extreme wealth. Like it's obviously not something that I've ever experienced, nor will I ever, but I find Magnolia in this context funny. She's so oblivious to so many real world things and that is sad and bad, but it's a book. So I can feel like, like I can justify it in this way. I feel like a lot of people read these books and they're like, oh, like I can't relate because I don't like designer things or I don't, you know, have this extreme wealth or something like that, which I understand. And it's a valid criticism to make, but I don't think I'm trying to relate to these characters. Sometimes I do. Definitely sometimes I do. And I honestly think that I'm relating more to Magnolia in this book specifically than I have in any of the previous books in the series but that's more due to circumstances she is going through and how she is feeling rather than her environment and her wealth and her fame. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not reading these books to relate. I read them for the writing. I read them because the characters feel like my friends and it feels like coming home even though I have no link to this world personally or in terms of relatability. But for some reason, Jessa can just make me feel like these people are real and they're my friends. Even though if these people existed in the real world, I would probably most definitely never cross paths with them. But a girl can just imagine. You know what I mean? She's just an idiot and it's funny. I'm at page 267, chapter 33. I'm gonna stop there for a bit because I have to head out and run some errands, but oh my gosh, like, I don't know how I feel about this book yet. Like, it's hard to explain. I don't, I don't know. I, it's just different a little bit. 
it's the same but it's different from the previous books. It's still the same characters and they talk the same and they think the same and they behave the same. With some character development, I will say, are they perfect? No. But have we seen development? Yes, a little bit. Have we also seen regression? Yes, a little bit. But due to the circumstances, I understand. However, I wouldn't say this book focuses as much on the romantic relationship, but more so on the individual characters and what they're dealing with and yeah their development as individuals but it does feel a little bit different because i can't explain it without being too spoilery but i will say it's not as much back and forth as it is in the previous books which is good because we've seen some growth but the characters are just dealing with other things that are making life very very difficult and so it does feel a little bit different because of that because we're just focusing on different things but I am still very much enjoying it. And like I mentioned earlier, I think this book, for me personally, has been the most relatable because of Magnolia. I don't feel like I've ever really been able to relate to Magnolia before ever in these books, even though I love her as a character. Yes, again, like I said, she's problematic, she's selfish, she's all these things, but I love her as a character, but I've never really felt like I could relate to her. And in this book, I definitely feel like I can in some aspects. So I feel like that's, different in a good way. I'm gonna take a break and I'll update you guys later. I don't know if I ever thought I would really say this, but I really feel bad for Magnolia. I really do. Everyone just keeps leaving. Like her world is literally falling apart. Not just one relationship, like everything. And you can have all the money in the world, but it doesn't stop your world from falling apart. And my heart kind of hurts. The fact that Magnolia still doesn't know what Julian and Daisy do, like has been told multiple times what they do, refuses to believe it. This level of delusion that she has despite people telling her facts straight to her face and her just choosing not to believe it is actually just so entertaining to me. Like it will never not be hilarious to me that she really doesn't know what Julian does. Like Daisy was literally like, this is what I do. And she was like, don't be silly. <laughs> what? He gives me a tiny wink. There's magic in those winks of his, I think. I always suspected that to be true. They make you braver and stupider. I've done a thousand questionable things because BJ Ballantyne blinked at me and gave me a half smile and my stomach dropped three stories inside my chest cavity. I hope he winks at me forever. I'll never get over Jesse Hastings writing. Never, ever, 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 ever. Like just simple things like that. She's literally describing his wink and I'm like, I could cry. Yep. He just wanted to back up. And now it's all a mess. <sighs> Guys, one of my favorite characters just showed up. And I miss them, but they're back. <sighs> and I really don't know what kind of role they're gonna play in this book. Like, I, I really don't know. And I think we will find out. Oh, my brain is so conflicted because it's hard to explain without spoilers, but I want happy endings for multiple people and multiple people can't have it, at least not in the way that I imagine it happening. But I hope they all get happy endings regardless. Like this is the thing with these books, Magnolia Parks, like this universe, they don't get happy endings. These books don't have happy endings, but this is the final book in Magnolia and BJ's perspective. So surely, Surely this will have a happy ending if it doesn't which like there's a very real chance that it might not have a happy ending Obviously based on history and how Jessa Hastings writes endings But also because Jessa Hastings doesn't 
follow a formula. She doesn't follow the typical formula. She herself has said, you know, like I don't write books for other people. I write them for myself and I'll do whatever the heck I want in those books. And the characters will tell me what they want to do. Like I'm not gonna just make it all fine and dandy for my readers, you know, like I'm gonna do whatever I think these characters would do. And she often says like, I don't classify my books as romance, people have put me in that box. I don't classify my books as a certain genre, like people like to place me in these boxes. And that is scary because usually if you could say, oh, this is just a romance, you know, it's just like a, a third act conflict and then they're gonna get there happily ever after. Like it would be nice to say that, but there's no formula with these books. It's just like, you're just watching someone's life unfold. You know, like there's plot, there's things happening, but it's not like a formulaic plot, if that makes sense. No, <sighs> I'm a bit stressed about it because if this person gets their heart even more broken, I don't don't really know how I'm going to feel. Actually, I do know how I'm going to feel. I'm going to feel really sad about it. So, Jessa, please don't do this to me. Queen of Hearts. <laughs> oh. Ow, that hurts. <laughs> My heart hurts. Stop. Oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. My heart. <laughs> it's breaking. It's breaking. How do you come to care about side characters this much? Oh, ouch, Jessa. <sighs> like, I actually. Like, I'm. I feel. I'm feeling real feelings reading this book. Like these books really just get me. Like this is ink on paper and I'm... <sighs> I actually could scream. Oh. Oh my gosh, Jessa. Ah. <sighs> How many loves do you get in a lifetime? Like you might love a star. If it wasn't him, it would be you. I might pass away actually. Yeah, I think I might. Oh, well, my heart hurts. In another life, yeah. I'll meet you there. Stop, you're... When you walk through that door from now on, you're no one to me. Stop, no, oh, like I know. Like I know it has to happen this way, but like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Chapter 43 literally just put me through the ringer. It was like, it gave me all these butterflies and then all the butterflies died. I know not everyone will feel the same as me. This person is one of my favorite characters and they really just had their heart ripped out. Oh my gosh, that was a wild ride. She's the only home I've ever been interested in having. Her body is the walls, heart's the ceiling. I'll live here forever. Good morning guys, it is 8am and I'm ready for another day of pain reading this book. I just got ready for the day, I have a hair appointment, well I have to leave for my hair appointment in like an hour so I'm gonna try and get some reading done now that I'm like ready for the day. Got my head banding because I'm getting overstimulated by my hair falling into my face so we love a little headband moment. Um, last night I got up to page 480. <sighs> Yep, I did. And this book is just over 700 pages. So we have a little over 200 pages left. I might finish this today. I'm not sure. I have a bit of a social day today, so I don't know how much I'm going to read. I like want to finish it today, but I also don't. I want to finish it today because I obviously want to get this video up for you guys in like a reasonable amount of time, but I also want to prolong my reading experience as long as possible. But then I also want to finish it because I just never want to stop reading it. So I don't want to prolong it because I want to read it. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm gonna cause myself some pain this morning. I'm not allowed to cry because I just did my makeup, so let's hope not. <sighs> it hasn't even been two minutes yet and I already wanna cry. Pull yourself together, Rachel. It's literally ink on paper. <sighs> okay, happy, happy, happy. Not real, 
don't exist, don't need to emotionally attach myself to words on paper, I'm fine. I think the lighting is terrible, but I just made it to my hair appointment. I didn't get that much reading done this morning. I got like 40 pages done. It was painful, but I'm loving it. I honestly don't think I'm gonna take this book into my hair appointment with me because I'm not usually there for like a ridiculous amount of time. Like I'm usually only there for about an hour and I usually just like chat to my hairdresser or if I do read, I'll read on my Kindle app on my phone. So not really any reading updates. Hopefully a hair update when I see you next, even though you can't even really see my hair that well right now. It's just lightened a lot. It's like very golden-y, which I don't hate, but we're just going in for a refresh. You can kind of see the golden-y blonde kind of coming through because obviously it was bleached for a, a long time. So I've got to keep it updated, but I'm so excited to have fresh hair. It's always like the best feeling ever. Hair update. It's actually been a few hours. <laughs> I went out to lunch with one of my friends straight after my hair appointment and I just came home and now I'm going to keep reading. But yeah. This is the hair. I'm so happy with it. I love it. I have some lighter face framing and the rest is just darker, but it will fade as well. But this is not bleached at all. This is just, we put like less color on the front pieces so they don't go as dark. And it's just fun to have a bit of dimension. Anyway, back to reading. I feel like I filmed so many clips in this exact spot, but this is just my absolute favorite reading spot. I feel like everyone has like a favorite reading spot, whether it's your bed or a chair or your car or your couch, whatever it may be. And mine is the couch. I don't know why, but the couch is just my favorite place in the house. I'm not really a bed girl. Like I'm only usually in bed if I'm going to sleep or like reading before I go to sleep, you know? Like this is my, my cozy place, my cozy spot. <laughs> Excuse me, but what the heck is going on? Excuse me? What? And we're not gonna get any answers to that, are we? We're gonna have to wait like who even knows how long. Oh my gosh, Jessa. Why'd you do this to us? Why is she being so mean? Oh my gosh. I'm getting a headache. I'm so confused what's going on. Things can never be simple, can they? They can never be simple. She's not perfect, but she knows how to take care of people. When she loves someone, she loves them. I literally just had to force myself to stop reading because I need to leave the house in like 20 minutes and I need to eat dinner. And I just totally forgot that I needed to organize myself. I was so caught up in this world and what was going on because I'm so confused at what is happening right now. And we're not gonna find out in this book, I don't think. It's probably gonna be a future book, if you know what I mean. But I was so immersed in that. And then I looked at the time and I was like, oh, I gotta get moving, you know? I gotta get ready. At least I'm like ready. I just need to eat some dinner. But it's like almost six and we're probably gonna be out late tonight. So I don't think I'm gonna even have time to read when I get home. I literally have like a little over a hundred pages left and I, I just want to finish it, but I don't think, uh, I could say, I don't know. I could stay up tonight. I'm not very good at staying up. We'll see. I'll see how I feel when I get home. I'll probably read a bit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this actually hurts so bad, but oh my gosh. I'm not doing well. like 40 pages left. I don't want to be done. I don't want to be done. Stop. Jonah? <sighs> I just got chills. I'm an actual mess. I really am. Ink on paper, Rachel. Ink on paper. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. Oh my freaking gosh. 
it's too early for this. It's literally like 7 a.m. on a Friday morning. Like, why am I? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Pull it together. Let's go. Guys, I actually have like never been such an emotional mess over a book. Like these characters feel so real to me. Like you can't tell me this is made up in someone's brain and they just wrote it, wrote it out and published it. Like this is real. You're telling me I can't be friends with these people in real life. You're telling me they don't exist. Like these thoughts are just someone, like they're not. It's actually quite rude. Is what I think is happening actually happening? <sighs> I can't believe it's over. It's been a few hours since I finished this now and I feel like I've processed it a little bit and I guess I need to finish the vlog. So my final thoughts, honestly, absolutely incredible. Five stars from me. It was so good. Like it was just so good. It was heartbreaking, but also so heartwarming. And I feel like the ending was absolutely perfect. I was really, really happy with how Jessa chose to end it. I am so sad to be leaving this POV. Not this world, obviously there'll be two more Daisy Hates books, I'm pretty sure. And I, like they've set them up well. Like in this book, there are so many things that are happening that you're like, I just cannot wait to find out what is happening on the other side of this storyline. Because I mean, there's some very suspicious things going on, but you just don't know really what they are. You just know that there's something and I'm so intrigued to see what those end up being but yeah Jessa has killed it once again five stars for the fifth time fifth book fifth five star read yeah it was I have no words like I absolutely adore this series I love these characters with my whole heart even though they definitely aren't perfect but I think flawed characters are so important and as I always say Jessa's writing is absolutely unmatched like there is just no one who does it like Jessa does absolutely adore this I think this is also my first five star of 2024 not including rereads because obviously rereads are they're gonna be five stars but I feel like they can't count towards like my 2024 five stars. So first five star of the year, not surprising at all. I loved it and I hope you guys love it too. This comes out February 13th, I'm pretty sure. One day before BJ's birthday, one day before Valentine's Day. The perfect way to spend Valentine's Day, honestly, if you ask me. When you guys read it, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for coming with me on this absolute roller coaster ride. I had so much fun, even though it broke my heart. <laughs> but it was just, it, it, this is what I want reading to feel like. So this just, yeah, it was great. But I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.